Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not gonna pay for it. Who says you're not gonna pay for it? I'll make that decision, not you. She's honest. What you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Curtis Moss is suing his brother, Stephen Moss, in the amount of $3,200. Mr. Moss claims he had a friend transfer money into his brother's bank account. However, his brother refuses to give him the money. Mr. Moss claims his brother owes him from a past debt, so the money is rightfully his. All rise. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. I don't think both of your witnesses answered. You may be seated. Thank you, Will. Curtis Moss versus Stephen Moss. Um, Mr. Curtis, you're suing your brother for $3,200. You said he stole some money from you. That rightfully belongs to you, and he refuses to give it back. What's going on, brothers? Good morning, Your Honor. Um, I'm here today to collect my money back from my brother, uh, Steve, here, who thought it was the right way to take my $3,200. Okay. Uh, How did he take it? How did he get it? Well, back last year sometime, I was going through some difficulties, Your Honor, and um, I was facing eviction, and uh, just so happened a friend of mine gave me a call, and uh, he owed me some money. He was going to send me this money, but I didn't have no bank account. And How don't you have a bank account? Well, you know, I don't have a bank account. You know, okay. I'm not the only one. All right. So since you didn't have a bank account, what happened? Oh, so my boy was going to send me the money order, uh, and I told him I can't have a money order because my landlord needs this money right away. And uh, so I come over here, and I tell my brother Steve right here, Your Honor, about my situation, about not having a bank account. He tells me, well, if your friend going to send you some money, you can set up a Google wallet. I, Your Honor, I don't even own a wallet. I don't even know what Google wallet is. It's not a wallet. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that, that's my whole thing, Your Honor. I don't know what this is. And Steve, and Steve knows that. He's his tech guy or whatever. So you didn't understand what he was talking about? No, he was just saying a wallet. I didn't know anything about it. So needs to say, Your Honor, my brother had a bank account. He thought it would be the bright idea because Steve always got bright ideas. And he told me, tell Dan to send the money to me. And he'll get the money to me out of his account and give it to me. That's my problem. I had no reason to think he'd do anything different, Your Honor. So uh, when uh, uh, the, the Dan sent the money, I'm calling like, Dan, you know, did you send the money? Uh, 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 as, as you can see right here in, 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 in my text messages that I got in evidence, Dan sent me the money saying that it was in my brother's account. I'm calling my brother Steve. Steve is never picking up the phone. He know my situation, Your Honor. He know what I was facing. Mm -hmm. He never picks the phone up, so a whole day go by. The next morning comes, my mm -hmm. landlord won her money, and I told her, can you just give me some time to go get my check? No, and I wasn't going to pick up no check. I was just waiting on my little brother Steve, Your Honor. Your little brother? Yes, that's my little oh, brother. Oh, okay. So, so uh, finally, he picks the phone up, and he uh, tells me, I'm like, yo, bro, Dan said he sent the money. Can you, you know, go write a check out for me? for my landlord so I can just come by, get the check, and go take it back to her. How much was the rent? Uh, uh, 16, like $16.50, Your Honor, about 16 And so the rest was yours? Uh, it was all mine. It was, mm -hmm. it, was, it was my money, Your Honor. So, okay. So the thing was, he tells me he can't give me, he tells me I can't do that. This is all in the text message. I can't give you the money. I'm like, what do you mean you can't give me the money? This is my money. So he said, call me. Okay, I call him because I want to know what's why you can't give me mine. So I call, I call Steve. Steve's telling me he can't give me the money. I can't give you anything. I'm like, I'm like, why? He talking about because you owe me. I said, oh. I owe you what? What are you talking about? I owe you some money for, Steve. This is my money. I'm ready to face eviction. And you talking about some old past stuff. And this past is why stuff. Some past stuff, Your Honor. So this is why I'm here to get my 3200 from Steve. Because even though he's my little brother, Your Honor, he has a way of taking advantage of me. That's what he does, Your he Honor. He just took advantage yeah, of me? Yes, so that's what he always does. Let's rewind this back, Your Honor. Baseball, how are you doing today? I'm well. That's great. I'm going to rewind this back to our brother, uh, Charles's funeral. He died last year in August. So basically, I needed help for the funeral funds, right? I asked my big brother here to please, can you help me? He, and he was cool with it. So we had to uh, split it $3,500 because the cost was $7,000. So he said that he didn't have $3,500. So 
he decided to give me 200 and he decided that he would pay me back. So what do you mean he decided? I decided. Is that what he told that you that was pay you back? He said he would pay me back the money. He would pay you the difference. The, re the rest, basically. 3300 Yes. Okay. So I told him. Wait a minute. Did he say when he would pay it? Your Honor, my apology. He said within six months he will pay me back this money. Okay. And I have the uh, letter right here. Let me see the letter. I would like to see the letter myself, Your Honor, because I, I need to know. Well, you know. well, wait a minute. Stop by. Let him see. Yeah, it first. I need to see because sometimes you be put, he could be right forging. There. Your signature's right on it. Your Honor, I was grieving. I don't even look like my. I don't even know what that is, Your Honor. That was a time you, I was grieving, Your Honor. I would never even put my name or anything like that. And 3200 is a lot of money for a person who had no bank account. I would never even put myself in that situation, Your Honor. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. On the judge, I, I, I'll be on this coffee. I don't know what you talking about. Oh, Have you oh, never oh. seen me take nothing but a Tylenol you in your life? Weed. You, I, that, everybody bro. smokes some weed. What are you Excuse me, Your Honor. Excuse me. And later... She showed me a picture of the burrito with the cockroach in it, and it appears as if it was indigestion due to the foreign object entering the subject's stomach. But she just testified she didn't eat the burrito. We're back with the case of Curtis Moss, who is suing Stephen Moss for $3,200. So, basically, after the, um, the funeral, I get a, a phone call basically saying that um, Charles had a life insurance policy. Uh huh? Uh, uh, yeah, a life insurance Your policy. Your brother that you paid the $7,000 for had a life insurance policy. Which oh. I basically paid 6800 He okay. only put up 200 I gave you something. I gave him 200 you know, and I gave him what I can afford. I don't live the life he lived. I gave him something. I oh, told so him. now you remember giving him something and agreeing to pay the difference. But I, not, not no $6,800. No, not that much money. You don't know. Why would I do that? Okay, so now I need, I, you, I need you to be quiet. Okay? When you I found out that Charles had a $10,000 life insurance policy after the funeral. Yes, and okay. his name was on it. Curtis was the beneficiary? Yep. Hold up. You're, you're, hold, oh, no, you hold up. Let me finish you talking <laughs> to him. So I came up to Curtis, and I talked to him, and I said, hey, what's up about this uh, life insurance policy that Charles got here with your name on it? And he said, I don't know nothing about that. Because I don't know about the policy. Mr. Sneaky, he dog. just gets coming. I don't, don't, know about I, the policy. don't respond to him, okay? I'm, I'm going to get back to you and let you rebut that, but let him say what he claims. So, yeah, you know, he just being sneaky like, nah, I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about that. I'm like, bro, you know something about it. So, he had a friend named Daniel that sent some money to my bank account, which I believe that's the money he was supposed to pay for the rent. And all of a sudden, when I get the money, I was going to give him the money, but I said, you know what? This dude hasn't paid me nothing. So, this money that his friend sent me, I kept the money. For what he owed you? Yes, the 3000 But did he tell you when he asked you to get that money in your bank account that that was the money he needed to pay his rent? Yeah, he told me that. But so, the you thing wouldn't was, even pay his rent? But no, no, no. He told me that's on the text messages that he told me to keep that money. I never well, told you to message? keep no money. Why would I tell hey. you to keep my rent money, man? Mr. Moss, please. Where's the message? Where's the text message? To be honest, Your Honor, I don't have the text message. I wasn't going to give him the money regardless anyways, but he told me to keep the money. I said, okay. I never would told this man about keeping my money, Your Honor. All this about raising your hand. A lot of people come in these courtrooms and raise their hand and still tell you a lie, Your Honor. I'm telling the truth. Were you the beneficiary of a $10,000 insurance policy from Charles? Your Honor, to be honest with you, I had received some money, but I'm going to tell you how much. I just want to know, were you? Yeah, I received some. And when did you receive it? It was, you know, I really, it was after the funeral, Your Honor. The truth of the matter, Your Honor, since he's just digging and stuff, since he's going off and just digging and stuff, my brother Charles owed me some money. So when he died, I'm like, okay, you took me down here. I don't know about no policy stuff. You got some money from your brother's insurance policy. Is that, that true? Possible, I got honor. some, some small, you know. How much? I, this is probably roughly f f about 4000 if you want to Why say Why would roughly? you get 4000 if it was a 10000 policy? I guess why I said I, I said roughly because you know they take out stuff. No, the stuff be taken out. Take out anything on insurance. You policy. you are you just take advantage of people, Steve. Like, dude, you been using that. me for the past year since we was kids, I man. I never used uh -uh. you, Steve. I raised hey. you, man. Now you all should have had these arguments a long time ago. I figured it was so, it's something that's been brewing for a long time. It's not just happened today. It is, you But let me try to heart. understand. It's my heart. And just my hold, brother will come hold in really and thank me like this. Mr. and Mrs. Mr. Ross. Mrs. Ross. Don't got nothing to do with no drugs. I don't know about no drugs. Only drugs I, only drugs I, I, I be on is coffee. I don't know what you talking about. Oh, Have you never oh. seen me take nothing but a Tylenol you in your life? Weed. You, I, that, everybody smokes some weed. You, excuse me, Your Honor. Excuse me. All right, I'm going to have to have Will stand between you two. No, -uh. I'm just saying, cause but, I... but no. Now I need you to be quiet. Seriously, this, this is a this is a matter that the two of you need to go see a counselor, and let all of this anger out that's been brewing since childhood. 
You promise to pay him. The six months has passed. You get an insurance policy. You don't give your brother Stephen any money. Now you're about to come into $3,200 from your friend, and you don't even offer to say, well, let me have the $1,650 so I can pay my rent, and you take the difference. Did you make that offer? He never gave me a chance. You only hit the no, strong no. You knew, money. You knew $3,200 was coming. Yes. And your rent was $1,650. Yes. And you knew that you owed him from your brother's funeral. I was going to give him something. I don't... I never... But did you ever say... I was going to give him... Take the difference and just let me pay my rent. I... 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 I listen, I never told him anything about him getting any of your money. I was going to pay my rent. So I you're evicted now? Yes, I'm living couch to couch. You know, that is horrible. You know how many times I've been bit by bed bugs? You know how many people... Okay. I've been now, on now I'm going to ask you to be quiet. I believe that in all fairness, since you owed him, that he had a right to some of that money because you never were going to pay him. It's when I can, when I get the money, whatever. But you're the kind of person I can tell when money comes into your hands, you spend it. So you owed him, I'm, and I'm, now he owes you. So you're even. I just dismissed the case. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled the plaintiff's claim has been denied. Stay you, my brother. I love you. But it's a shame that you would rather see me on the streets than to have your money like this. But, bro, at the end of the day, you signed the contract. You said you was going to do something, and you ain't do nothing. You need to start taking care of your responsibilities. And coming up... I had some steak tacos from that taco truck. Okay, so how were you able to identify that it was food poisoning from his steak tacos? Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not oh, at your school. We're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Charles Guerrero is suing Amelia Torres in the amount of $9,000. Mr. Guerrero claims Ms. Torres caused him to lose money after she posted online that his taco truck uses low-quality meat, which led to food poisoning. Ms. Torres maintains that she did get food poisoning from Mr. Guerrero's taco truck and stands by her comments. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. And thank you, Will. You may be seated in the matter of Charles Guerrero versus Amelia Torres. You're suing her for $9,000 uh, worth of lost income, and you attribute that loss to the fact that she was posting negative comments about your taco truck on social media. Is that right? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, so explain it to me. Well, Your Honor, um, like, like you said, um, I'm basically suing Ms. Torres for $9,000 for uh, making false accusations uh, on social media. But first of all, tell me what's going on with your taco truck and why and what yeah, are you alleging that she posted? Allegedly, she uh, came to the taco truck three separate times. She uh, got food poisoning uh, three times and also found a cockroach inside of the burrito. Three times she got food poisoning. Yes, Your Honor. And she found a cockroach in the truck. <laughs> it's hard to believe, right, Honor? It's hard to believe that she came back two more times that's, to get food poisoned that's two exactly more times. That's what I'm saying. Now, that's what's hard to believe. That's you Somebody exactly. poisoned you the first time, you go back again and again. Now, that's hard to believe. That's, that's Your Honor, the first time I wasn't sure it was from his food. That's oh. why I kept coming back. The second time that I went to his place, that's when I, you know, was able to identify that the food poisoning was coming from How do you his... know? How were you able to identify that? I had some steak tacos from that taco truck. Okay, so how were you able to identify that it was food poisoning from his steak tacos? Well, because uh, I went to the doctor, I started feeling sick, and that was the only thing I had that day to eat, and that is how I was able to identify that the food poisoning was okay, coming from Okay, show me from some that. documentation. The only documentation I have is from the doctor that I had to visit, and he... For the uh, third time or the fourth time? The second time. Did you contact Mr. Uh, Guerrero the second time? No, I did not. I was feeling too sick to contact him. How long did you feel sick? Uh, for a couple of days. 
Oh, and so after you got over that sickness a couple of days, did you contact him? No, I did not. Okay, do you know how to use an email? Uh, I didn't have his email address. His taco truck doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, contact information on it? Uh, Does it have well, a phone number? Yes, but I just, How do you know, you know where the taco truck is parked? Well, I drive through there all the time. Through So it doesn't move around and go from place to place? Well, usually when I drive to work, that's where he is standing. Okay, so, so you went to work after you were sick for two days, right? Well, no. Oh, you no. did? I took a couple of days off. That's what I said. After those two days, you went back to work. I went back to work probably about two weeks later. I thought you were off for two days only. No, no, no. Well, you're off two days or two weeks or what? In a minute, you're going to tell me two months. <laughs> Coming up. And I had a burrito this time. And? A cockroach was in it. Did you eat the cockroach? No, that was disgusting, no. We're back with the case of Charles Guerrero, who is suing Amelia Torres for loss of income. Okay, now you went back a third time to eat. <laughs> you know, I was kind of hoping that maybe this time would be my lucky day and I would actually have something different than the other times, and I had a burrito this time. And? A cockroach was in it. Did you eat the cockroach? No, that was disgusting, no. Okay, so how do you know no. a cockroach was in the burrito? It was cut in half, and as soon as I opened it, it was there. God, Ms. Mr. Guerrero, you had something else to say? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I have a picture of the evidence of the cockroach that she uh, allegedly took the picture of at the burrito. And mm -hmm. uh, the wrapping is not even from my truck. I use a uh, clear, sil or a sil all silver wrapping. Oh, this and picture? The, yes, ma'am. And in the picture, uh, there's a silver and, and red um, foil on, wrapped around the burrito. Okay. So uh, that, that's definitely not my burrito or from my food truck. Your evidence, I'm going to read it from the doctor. This note excuses Amelia Torres from work or any other duties she may have previously said she would be able to fulfill. She contracted a stomach ache shortly after eating a burrito that contained traces of blataria known as a cockroach. She showed me a picture of the burrito with the cockroach in it, and it appears as if it was indigestion due to the foreign object entering the subject's stomach. But she just testified she didn't eat the burrito. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returned. What else did you post on social media about Mr. Guerrero's truck? I just posted the truth that his food made me sick. It made you so sick you kept going back. <laughs> You know, that was the only food truck on my way to work, so... The only place I could get food was from the food truck that caused me poisoning. I just had to keep going there. Yes. Do you hear how that sounds? I know it sounds crazy, Your Honor. It does. Yes. <laughs> it does. It sounds totally unbelievable. I know. Absurd. Yes. So absurd that I'm just going to do judgment for the plaintiff. Pay the man his money. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $9,000. The comments you made against my taco truck did a lot of damage. I'm glad the judge saw you as a fraud that you are. You're the fraud, and I'm never eating at your place again. 